It's a late spring lunch hour here in South Texas. And it's about mm, somewhere around 30 degrees, a little warm, which is about 90 something Fahrenheit. But hey, I'm not gonna complain. I have breath in my lungs. I'm out on the bike. I've got about an hour and a half of a zone two ride plan. So let's get it. We have had a ton of rain over the last probably week or so on and off some days like raining the whole morning or huge storms at night as a result everything is so green the wildflowers are still out different varieties than the last couple of weeks but man this time last year i remember we were starting to head into the crazy drought that we had in this part of texas in 2022 we didn't have a ton of rain all summer. It was brutal, but we got a good head start on it this year. Yeah, the heat's coming. It's already here, but this is just the way life is here in this part of Texas. You keep riding. Just to give a little bit of a life update, there's always a lot of change that happens around this time of year. I've been in college ministry now for almost a decade, and this time, right around May, is when the students typically leave for the summer, and ministry, at least in-person ministry, really slows down. So the schedule change always allows me time to refocus and study a bit more. I still, of course, do online ministry, online Bible studies with a bunch of the graduates and even some students who are here in town for the summer will still meet up. But yeah, for the next probably eight weeks or so, gives me some time to refocus and I love it. It's a great rhythm to be in. over the next couple of months though is riding bikes with students. The cycling community really changes when 60,000, 70,000 college students aren't in town. And you know, we don't really have a ton, believe it or not, of college students that ride bicycles, but definitely the community is big enough and you definitely miss it when they go. So as I was saying, over the last few days, we've had a lot of rain. And it got me thinking about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven, when he's talking about how two people are building a house. One builds his house on the sand and the other builds his house on a rock. And then Jesus says in his little story, the end of Matthew seven, that a storm came, floods came and exposed the foundation of the house. So Jesus uses that story to describe two types of people. First, the man who hears Jesus's words and obeys them. He's gonna be likened to the one who builds his house on the rock. But then the other one, the one who hears his words and doesn't do them, is gonna be the one who's likened to the one who builds his house on the sand. In other words, the one who hears his words but doesn't do them 
they're in for disaster. That's not good. Now this would have been well understood by Jesus' hearers in the first century because of passages like the Psalms and the Proverbs that always seem to make a distinction between the wise and the foolish. And I think that's what Jesus is doing here in Matthew 7, the exact same thing. He's saying, if you're wise, you're gonna hear my words and you're gonna do them. You're a fool if you don't. And this isn't just about not doing bad stuff because Jesus hates it and God gets mad or something. Well, I mean, that's true, but the other part of the story would have been really familiar to Jesus' hearers as well. And that's the idea of the storm. Jewish people in the first century divided history into two distinct ages. This age, and the age to come. This age characterized by wickedness, evil, sin, and unrighteousness, and the age to come characterized by righteousness and peace and joy, no sin, no death. And the dividing line between those two ages was a day called the day of the Lord. And the Old Testament prophets described this day as like a storm. So this is why Jesus' hearers would have been very familiar and it wouldn't have been strange what Jesus was saying to them in Matthew 7. So I think Jesus' point is pretty clear. He's saying, hey, order your life around my words, my teachings, actually obey them, and you'll make it through the storm you'll get eternal life on the day that he comes to restore all things. Like, you're not gonna be thrown into a lake of fire. I mean, that's really the simple truth of what he's trying to say with those words. And they're simple, it's not complex, but oh man, it can be really hard sometimes to set your heart to actually obey Jesus, especially when no one's looking. There's kind of a scary part about those words too. I mean, both people in the story are building a house. Both people are going to church, saying amen to all the sermons, but one of them is hearing the words, but not actually obeying them. That's what it all comes down to, friends. We've got to make sure we're on the right side of history on the day that the storm comes. Let's take Jesus' words seriously, not just hear them, but actually do them, especially when no one's looking. tree. <laughs> the rains came, the winds blew, and the tree fell. Man, I want to be like the man of Psalm 1, like the tree who's planted by streams of water that yields fruit. This is a description of the Messiah himself and an encouragement to us <laughs> to say, let's be like that. Well, friends, I'm almost home. I hope this was provoking, encouraging. Leave me a comment down below. What'd you think? Anything you want me to talk about in future videos? Would love to hear from you. Leave me something down below. Well, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next one.